Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series video. This video is going to be a lab and uh, in this lab I'm going to show you how to create a virtual server. So here I am in my IBM Cloud account. Now you may um, have a look at this and, and, and think well that, that doesn't look very familiar and um, if you're watching this shortly after I've recorded it well basically IBM have uh, now released a new version of the dashboard, a new version of uh, the IBM Cloud Console, uh, which you'll be able to find at cloud.ibm.com. So if you're still using uh, the old URL, which is uh, console.bluemix.com, uh, you may want to switch and start using cloud.ibm.com, and uh, you'll start to see your IBM Cloud account looking like this. Right, so let's um, go and provision a uh, virtual machine. And of course, if you um, uh, to be able to actually do this, you do need uh, an account, which is either pay as you go or subscription. Um, you can't actually do this with um, a light account because um, you, you obviously need to pay for the uh, compute that you're using. Okay, so let's start then. So first thing we need to do is actually move off to the catalog. And uh, within the catalog, we then move to compute. And here you'll see um, there we are virtual server, um, the virtual server tile. So if we click that, and what you'll see here, I'll just make the screen a, a little bit smaller, there we go, so you can see everything. So what you see here is the different types of virtual server that you can actually um, go ahead and provision. Um, so we're going to provision a, a public virtual server. Um, there's, there's, there's some more information about it here, and you can sort of uh, see the, uh, the, the different hourly costs that uh, um, these different types of servers um, attract as well. So, I'm, as I said, I'm going to uh, create a public virtual server. So, let's go continue from there. So, I'm going to create a, a public virtual server. Um, I only want one of them for now, but you can actually um, provision. I think it's. I think there's a, a soft limit of twenty at any one time. If you need to order more, then just get in touch with support. Um, but but to order more, you just simply you know. Um, the, the quantity that you actually want in this box, um, so you can either use the uh, you know use use the arrows or um, just just type the quantity in there. I'm going to uh, order one. Uh, you then choose your billing type, so either hourly or monthly. So again, you know think about how long you're actually going to need this server for, um, and that will then impact you know whether it's it's better to have hourly billing or whether it's going to be monthly billing. I'm going to choose hourly billing. Uh, the next thing is the host name. So this is the name of the server. Um, so ideally, obviously, you want a, um, a host name which reflects perhaps what the server is going to be used for, um, and obviously you need something which is unique. Um, so, um, so I'm going to call this one anyway. I'm going to call this uh, James Test Server. So I'm not going to use this one for long. Uh, the, the domain. So this is my 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 um, standard domain uh, within my account, but I can change that if I want to. Um, by the way, there's these uh, little icons here. These these eye icons. So if you're not entirely sure what a, um, what a field is about, then you can hover over those, and uh, you then get a tooltip which which explains uh, a bit more about what the uh, what the actual field is asking you for. Uh, the next thing is a placement group. So if you uh, if you want to place these servers in a particular location, we talked about placement groups in the last video. Uh, so if you want to do that, you can select your placement group here. If you want to create a new placement group, then uh, click new group. And you get a new screen up, so you can give it a name and decide where you actually want to have the placement group and which pod you want it in. Um, I don't want to do that at the moment, so I'm going to click cancel. The next thing is uh, the location. So obviously, you know, I've not put this in a placement group, so that's so my location isn't predetermined by that. Um, but I can choose which uh, which region that I want to put this uh, uh, server in, and then choose the location as well within that region. So I'm going to uh, build this uh, this one in Europe. And um, because I'm uh, in London, or I'm, I'm, I'm in the UK, I'm going to choose a London data center. So I'm going to choose, a, I don't know, Leno Six, I think. Um, but but I can I can literally put this uh, um, put this into a, whatever data center I like in the world. Uh, the next one is to actually choose what my virtual server is going to look like. So how much CPU, how much RAM is going to be in there. And I can either choose from these popular profiles, so we've got uh, four popular profiles here, and their their costs, or we can actually look at all profiles. So if there's a particular type of machine or configuration that you're after, then chances are they're going to be in these lists. And these are actually broken down into into sections as well. 
So for instance, we've got one here is balanced local storage. So if you have you know, a medium or large database which needs high, high I.O. Um, with local hard disks, then maybe you want to choose uh, one of these particular servers. And again, you can uh, um, see what kind of uh, prices those are as well from this list over here. Uh, a balanced server. So this is a balance between performance and scale scalability. So it's fairly common cloud workloads. Um, compute. So if, you, if you're building a web server, um, then uh, you may want to uh, consider a, a compute option. Um, memory um, is really for um, caching and real-time analytics workloads. So there's obviously a bit more focus on, on having RAM in these machines. And then GPU is where you want really high-performance workloads and uh, which actually contain GPUs as well. So I'm going to go for a, 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 the, the standard compute instance. I'm going to go back to popular profiles and just choose um, a compute instance. So it's C1, which is a one by one, that's one vCPU and one gigabyte of RAM. The next option here is around um, adding key, so an SSH key. So if I want to have a new SSH key, then I can I can add one in here if I want one. Um, I'm not actually going to provision one of those I don't, because it's just a demo machine. And the next one is image. So what, what operating system do I want my virtual machine to run? So I can choose between CentOS, Debian, Red Hat, Microsoft and Ubuntu. So um, so each of the uh, Linux um, uh, offerings typically has a couple of options or two or three, probably more options beneath them. So typically it's a, a particular version. So in this case, it's either six or seven of um, CentOS and I can either have a, a LAMP installation. So that's uh, obviously the Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL or PHP or MPHP, so a typical LAMP stack or I can just have it at minimal, so, so nothing actually on there. Um, similar with Debian, so you can see there's different versions of Debian available. Um, same with Red Hat, so I can um, either have a, a, a version 7 or 6, minimal or ramp. Uh, with Ubuntu, I've got a bit more choice as well, so I've got an 18. Um, let me just make that a little bit bigger so you can see that. We've got an 18 or a 16 or even a version 14. And uh, with, uh, with the Microsoft offerings, uh, well, it's obviously Microsoft Windows Server, so I can either have a 2012 R2 uh, standard, 2012 standard, or a 2016 standard. Uh, so I'm going to stick with um, stick with CentOS. I'm just going to make the screen a little bit smaller again, so you can uh, you can see it. Um, so I'm going to stick with CentOS. I'm going to have a, a minimal CentOS build. The next thing I do is is have some add-ons. So this is this is automatically popped up. So I can add on some database software on there if I want to. So I haven't chosen a LAMP stack. So for instance, if I wanted to have MySQL on there, then I could I could select that as a as, as an optional extra. Um, similarly, I can use MongoDB or, or Basho as well if I want to have uh, have those on there. Um, I'm, I'm not going to actually provision any of those. I'm going to make this just just really simple because I'm not going to really use it for very long. And then if I want to as well, I can also add some um, some other bits and pieces. Um, such as anti antivirus spyware protection, um, some advanced monitoring, and uh, well, actually they're they're the only two uh, two options that are that are available to me on this particular build or this particular image. Um, but you can see the, the the other various things that I can add to this if uh, if I want to. In fact, uh, you know because they're ticked, I, I'm getting those anyway. Um, provision script. So if there's something um, you know when I'm provisioning a server, I can also get it to run some scripts for me. Um, I'll talk about those in a, in a in a later video, but it's again it's a good way to sort of um, pre-build some things onto your server. Um, and similarly with user data. Now the next thing I want to look at is the attached disks. So uh, I can actually have up to five disks attached to this server. So if I click Add New, you can see the the different disks. So it's five disks. So there's uh, one boot disk and then four additional disks. So with the boot disk, um, I get um, uh, 25 gigabytes of sand space for free. Um, if I want to, I can make that 100 gigabytes, and I, I pay a small amount for that. Um, I'm going to switch that back to 25. And then on the other disks, well, I can I can make those you know different uh, different sizes that I that I want. So the choices are 10, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, etc., uh, etc., et right up to um, right up to two terabytes. So if I want to, I can uh, I can select different. Um, sizes for those, um, so you know another two hundred uh, and uh, uh, you know two two terabytes. So I can I can choose different storage like that if I want to. And again, you can see the different costs per hour. These are all uh, because I'm 
billing per hour. These are all per hour costs that are, that are popping up here. Um, I don't actually want to add any of these, so I'm just going to going to take those out. There we go. Uh, the next thing is uh, network interfaces. So by default, I'm getting 100 megabits per second public and private network uplinks. Um, I can change those if I want to. So click on there, you can see that I can get a, a one gig uh, public and private network uplink, uh, 100 megabits private network uplink. So if I don't actually want this server to um, attach to the internet, then uh, I can just uh, provision the, the, the private network uplink. And um, similarly, if I want a, a uh, a one gig private network uplink but no access to the internet then I can uh, choose that option there. I'm going to stick with the default um, so I'm going to uh, stay there. Now security groups um, so security groups are something I haven't quite explained yet um, but again I'll come into the come into those in a, in a later uh, lecture but effectively um, a, a security group is a um, well, it's, it's, it's kind of like a software firewall so it's um, it, you can place your your servers, your virtual servers, into a security group, and it then controls um, what um, a, uh, what inputs and outputs can go through that into that security group. So it's a really good way of um, uh, allowing um, traffic through, and obviously uh, barring traffic that you don't actually want to reach your server. But as I say, a later lecture we'll, we'll concentrate on those, and I'll show you how to set them up. Um, if you've got a private VLAN, you can you can create a private VLAN within your IBM Cloud as well. Again, we'll go we'll have a video showing you how to do that. And um, if you then want to assign something to your private VLAN, then you can do that here. I haven't got one set up in this account, so so obviously all I've got is the auto assigned. Okay, next is any uh, any other add-ons that I want to uh, put into this. So if I want some uh, hardware and software firewalls, I can do that. Uh, with some options, so you know I can click that and uh, see see what's there. Obviously, a Windows firewall won't be uh, particularly applicable to this this service. It's Linux based. Um, if I want some more IP addresses, then I can uh, then I can uh, uh, click and get those. So there's another box will will uh, pop up and ask me uh, some more detail about that. And uh, similarly for IPv6 as well. Um, but I'm I'm not going to choose any of those add-ons. Okay, so the next um, so the next part is you, you go over to this screen here. So where you see uh, so where you're actually seeing your order summary. So you can see over here that I'm ordering a virtual server instance. Uh, you can see what I'm what I'm getting. Um, the total due per hour, which at the moment is uh, 0.3 cents. And uh, if I've got any promo codes, and I can uh, I can apply those there. So all I need to do is uh, uh, check to say that I've read and agreed to the third party service agreements. Um, there is a third-party software terms for CentOS, so click that link and, and, and I can go away and read that. Um, if I'm happy with all that, then all I need to do, uh, or what I can then do is, or by the way, if I want to um, add this to an estimate, then I can I can click this box here. Um, but as I want to actually create this machine, what I'm going to do is click Create. And what's happening now is that machine is, uh, well, my account is going away and actually provisioning the server for me. Uh, so here we are back into uh, back into my resource list and if I click on the devices you can see that this server is now there so it's James test server and uh, if I uh, if I click on that now okay and then you can see this pending transaction so you can see that at the moment's in uh, cloud provision so I'm going to leave it there for now I'm going to I'm going to uh, just pause the video and uh, it should take a few minutes to to touch provision once it's up and running, I'll come back and uh, take you on to the next step and show you around this screen. Right, so my server has now been provisioned. And one thing that you'll notice, I'm just going to show you my uh, in my email. So this is the email that I use for, for this particular account. You'll notice these three emails here that come from Cloud Digital, Service, uh, Cloud Digital Sales. So you'll see the um, three, typically three emails when you order servers. Um, so the first one you'll see is um, one saying, well, thank you very much, your order has been received. Um, the second one you'll see is that the order has been been approved, so it's now in the provisioning process. And the third one that you'll see, which might follow a minute or two later, is um, another one to say, well, okay, the provisioning process is completed and your server is now ready to use. So that's another way to, um, especially if you've got lots of machines being uh, being provisioned at once, that's a good way to, to see and track the progress of your 
of your provisioning other than looking it in the uh, in the console. Anyway, back to the console. So as I said, my machine is now provisioned. So um, this is kind of like the summary screen. So if I had more more than this one server, then they'd all be listed here. Um, what I can do from here is I can obviously see what type of server it is, where, where I've provisioned it, so it's London 6. It's public IP address and it's private IP address as well. So this is an IP address that other machines within that you've provisioned within your cloud uh, account can actually also um, talk to this machine on. Um, and obviously a start date. Um, you've got a, a drop down here with some actions. So if I want to reboot the server, power it on and off. If I want to rename it, etc, uh, etc. Et and also cancel the device, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, then, then I can do that from that, that uh, menu there. If I click this uh, here, I can get a, a very quick sort of summary. Oh, well, that's great. Um, so it's going to re-authenticate for me. Um, not entirely sure why that's happened. It's because I've probably been um, logged in for a little while. So, um, so if, as I say, if I click that drop down, then um, I can... Uh, see uh, a quick summary of what's going on. Similarly, if I just click here, uh, click the link, then I get a, a sort of a full page view, um, which is, is maybe a little bit more useful uh, when I want to concentrate on one particular service. Let's see in the full, full, um, full blown view. So, um, so here we go. So on this particular page, you've seen the device details. So again, um, so here, if I want to add notes about this server, so if I want to say um, this server has been created, can't type, created as a test. So again, you know, you can use that to, uh, you know, so other users, other administrators, for instance, can actually see what this server's for. So if they've got any questions about it, you can just put some notes in there to, uh, to give them some information as well. Um, as you can see, generally, you know, the thing's active when it was started, uh, whether or not it's been reloaded. Um, location, etc., etc. The last transaction that was that was on there, so you can hover over that and see how long that actually took. Um, you can see other details of like the OS, etc., etc. Um, this bit's probably quite in, uh, quite important because it gives you your IP address, your networks, your IP addresses, gateways, all those sorts of things for your networking. Similarly for the private LAN, um, you can then uh, configure things into security groups. But again, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Okay, the other um, so, the, so the other um, tabs that you've got on here are um, so we've, we've, this is this sort of configuration cases um, or any support cases that you might have. Um, so there's no support cases on here. Um, any usage? So how much uses have you put in there? So what's your so what's your CPU usage? What's your billing looking like? So you can see what your billing's looking like and see other CPU usage as well. See what your bandwidth has been like. Um, so at the moment there won't really be any bandwidth because we've not done anything. Um, there's some monitoring details. Um, so that's up and running. Um, security. Uh, let's see what this says. Um, so, so if there's any security issues, then they tend to get flagged in here. And you can also do some vulnerability scans as well. Um, now this one's probably going to be quite interesting because it's where your passwords are. So if you want to know what your, what your uh, default passwords are. So for instance, because I've installed CentOS... Um, I've also got a root password for CentOS, and um, this is displayed in here, so I'll, I'll uh, show you that soon. And uh, then we've got storage, so what storage is actually attached to this machine, so you can see all that stuff as well. But I've, I've obviously only got um, a block device, which is which is my boot disk. So okay, well, right, I'm going to leave the video here um, because otherwise we're it's 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 going to turn into quite a long one. So in the next video. I'm going to show you how to log into the machine using SSH.